This is the start of the, the housework, the renovation, which is you know, what it's all about. Oh, it's inchy. <sighs> Epic fail, it's not gonna happen. Uh, do I film it? Mm, maybe blur out the little piece. I got stopped at the border. They held me in Rotterdam. How many days have I been in Italy this year? Oh my God, bleep. <laughs> Right, so I arrived really late last night. I ended up driving right the way through. Um, the, it was all clear until I got just past Milan and then they closed the toll road. Um, oh, and the reroute was ridiculous, it took about an hour. But anyway, so I got here, I think, 1am. First time I've done that, driven all the way through from Rotterdam right to the house. Um, those two cans of rocket fuel helped, I suppose, but I probably wouldn't do that again. So a quick check as first arrived. As usual, there's loads of, loads of cobwebs and stuff on the shutters, which have just brushed off. So all good here, everything's fine. Um, it looks like the door had blown off. So there might have been some really strong winds in the last couple of weeks because the olives are everywhere. But looking around, everything else is all good. So the field, I don't know if you can hear this because it's pretty windy, although it's mild. So the field, let's say it's half done, yeah? He's done all right, to be fair. It was not like this when I left, but it needs a bit more work. So it's done something to it. So it looks quite good, but it needs to be tilled. All the water, the, the runoffs for the winter. So if you look at the neighbor's field, it is just perfect. Look at that. That's field envy right there. Um, so I would like my bit here to look like that bit there. So I'll ask him to pop back whilst I'm here. So now emptying the car, get this fireplace out. It's going to be fun, but um, oh, it just feels so good to be back. On the drive down, sometimes I think, oh, it's such a long way. But when you get here, oh. Just like stress, just pours off you. It's so nice. All right. Anyway, uh, busy day. Let's get stuff done. Car's empty apart from the beast. So here it is. Um, I was all wrapped with a lot of traveling. So, so yeah, if you can see that. I've no idea how heavy it is, but. It's like, you know, I can lift it gently. Probably have to prop it, bring it out here. Bought one of those heavy duty trolleys and let's see what happens. I think if it's too much, I'm gonna have to go and uh, ask the farmer next door to give me a hand or something. Big scratch on the bumper.
Uh, there we go. All the way from England to his new home. In there. Gotta smash all this out, obviously. That's the job for tonight. This is the start of the big change, I suppose. Everything I've filmed so far has been outside because I've been told don't touch anything inside, which is bad advice, if I'm honest. If I would say to somebody else who is buying in Italy now is, if you've got some simple internal changes to make, just get on with them. The, the stories I was told as to what to do and what not to do, it's really helped me back, to be fair. I think it's not a waste of a year, but it's taken a year. Uh, but on the flip side, having now lived in the house for a year or over a year and not actually done anything it gives you time to you know hang around in the space and see it from different angles and see it in all seasons as well and i have changed my mind what i want to do with it in that period so it's, you know you know there's, there's two sides to that i suppose in the fact that maybe you do need some time to really live in it to see what you want to do ultimately but then also simple changes if you're sure, just get on with them. A lot of time has passed, and for those who've watched all the previous videos, thanks for hanging around. Hopefully there wasn't too much strimming on those. This is the start of the, the housework, the renovation, which is you know what it's all about. It's quite a small space, difficult to film, but I'll do my best to show you the process. It's not a how-to video. I'm not an expert. There are loads of YouTubers I watch, and I'll reference them all in case you're not watching their, their channels, they're well worth watching. Um, and yeah, University of YouTube, as they say. <laughs> yeah, we'll get there, eh? Um, oops. So yeah, that's it. Let's get started. The sink first. This posh temporary sink it served its purpose, but it's time to move. just done the most stupid thing. I haven't even figured out if I can get that temporary kitchen unit in here. It's two meters long, it's quite high, it's higher than a normal cupboard. This doorway's, I don't know, not even six foot. Here it is. A bit stupid. Getting far too carried away, far too excited. I don't want to take that apart to get it in, but I'm going to need it to cook on while I rip the house apart. Hmm. I think I might have figured it out. This is the first attempt, and I'll be honest and share it if it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. Just 
change the camera angle. Uh, right, pretty. One cut to show, <laughs> show if it works. Front door's in the way now. <sighs> Epic fail, it's not going to happen. Oh my god, bleep! <laughs> Happy days. Second attempt. It's a bit crammed. But that's, this is where the cooker's going to be anyway, because the extractor fan can go out. Nice window open there. This doorway is going to be closed off. So the, uh, I'll make a cupboard the other side and a cupboard in the, in, in the corner to access from the hallway, because I don't know about you, but corner cupboards in kitchens, I've had every house I've ever had, they've just been a waste of space. So I'll make that an accessible cupboard from the hallway and then put a sliding door the other side. You won't see it here and then sink there obviously big open in here fridge freezer here nice little kitchen big kitchen actually oh i'm well pleased that's great all right it's come together so uh well, it's come together quite nicely so we've got the fridge in a bit of storage in the big work surface kitchen unit in and I've brought the sink, I call it a sink, it's a table with a uh, Tupperware pot on the top that I have to take to the bathroom to fill with hot water and bring back to wash the dishes. Because it's only, the only place of water's coming in the building at the moment is in the bathroom. And there's, you know, massive water tanks, lovely hot showers. Um, but the far end was the kitchen. And now this is halfway down the house. So at least I haven't got so far to walk with the water. As usual when you move stuff around, I find I've already got too much tat. I mean, in England, I tried to downsize. Not go too minimalistic, but really cut back. I'd, um, the money from this purchase came from a, a sale of a house in England. So it was a, a fair-sized house and I downsized that. And this is a small house. I brought loads of stuff down in the car, a couple of journeys. I think I've forgotten what I brought down because I've got way too much stuff. Ah, it's quite hard to downsize downscale takes years i'm not a hoarder but looking at this uh, maybe i am is that an oxymoron have i just confused myself i don't intend to be a hoarder but looking at the stuff i've got yeah i got way too much oh this feels nice this will be a lovely kitchen oh, i can't wait to get that wall open boom the other thing which is quite nice now i've half emptied out the what is going to be the kitchen is this this space now feels big again I know I've got the sofa parked up here, which is big and, you know, my bike's parked there. But um, when that wall's open up for the, for that kitchen I've just left, 
Um, this space here, where the fireplace will go in, is lovely. I'm going to have to build probably a temporary office over there because I obviously work from home a lot. So I'll put it in that corner temporarily. But one of the outhouses is going to be a fantastic office in the future. And then out here, this will be the lounge. So it's big. That sofa is going to be in here. Seeing a bit more presentable. Sort the roof out. Massive window. Well, big window going there. And then these doors here are going to be a window. And uh, I think it's going to be a nice space then. So lounge through into a kitchen area. There'll be a kitchen table in here. There'll be patio doors going out there to a, a terrace. Obviously fireplace would be great in the winter into the kitchen and then you zoned out of there into the other half of the house, which will be the bedroom, the walk-in wardrobe and a really nice ensuite bathroom. Um, yeah, it's gonna be amazing in a couple of years time. This is not, it's gonna take me ages. It's gonna take me ages. I think it's time to start this project. I think this will take quite some time. That first bit went a bit better than planned. I think I've just got to keep just smashing this up now. It should come out. All right, but it's hard work and it's uh, dusty. So these are good. Let's get back on with it.
Hard work. Food done tonight. Early night. Clean up in the morning, I think. Okay. Oh, I think I'll call it a night on that one. So it looks really good, actually. I'm really pleased with it. So I've got it down. I left the bottom. I left the bottom brick in because I don't know what I'm going to do with the floor yet until I see the level from the other room and. Well, it doesn't matter through that door actually. But now I've left the bottom brick in and I actually quite like it with just the uneven stones underneath. So if I can take those out, find a whole load of them that are flat and put them back in, that could look quite nice. I'll have a look on Pinterest for a few hours, no doubt looking at some clever designs other people have done. I've just copied that. I think it'll be really nice if you get some nice thin those thin brick as well i can cover those those old red bricks take those out get some thin bricks make them look a bit more rustic yeah it's a good few hours work done i've got to go and get a tool tomorrow because whilst i've got an angle grinder um all my discs are broken so i need to pop out in the morning buy some of those clear all this up this will just go for like uh check it out so i built when i build some steps it can just be the footings for some steps so i think it's a good thing about out here most of the things i'm Taken out. I don't need to take to the tip. I can move them and reuse them. Oh, I'm gonna be aching though tomorrow That is hard work, but um good result I'm pleased with that Let's have a beer An Italian one of course I know it's cheating, but uh, it's convenient, yeah. As it happens, there is a pizza place down the road that does phenomenal pizzas. A margarita, I think, is four euros. But this is just too convenient. Got a lot on. But one day there will be a uh, pizza oven here, outside. No excuse then, fresh pizzas. Not every day, but at least six days a week.
I right, came up with a crazy idea a couple of weeks ago, being inspired by somebody else on YouTube who's got one of these small houses and they uh, shower out the back. So the problem I have here, the bathroom's quite small, so even though you can open the windows and get the, get the breeze through, if it gets really steamy, um, it takes ages to clear and it's like a wet room, so everything gets soaking wet. So what I thought I'd do, shower there, I bought a new hose, long one, it's five meters. So, wow, maybe I didn't need five meters. So I'm out, <laughs> I'm right outside. So I can have a nice hot shower out here and there's no, no wet inside to um, dry out. Because once it's damp and if the weather changes, it goes cold, that's it. It's sort of, it's hard to get rid of that musty smell because the bathroom's so old. I definitely didn't need five meters. It's like a snake. Okay. No, I'm in showering outside. I think in the future, anyway. Definitely have a nice outside shower. Whether I have an outside bathtub. They seem to be quite popular on these Airbnbs. So, got the space for it. And once all the landscaping's done, there's plenty of privacy. Um, so yeah, shower outside tonight. Uh, do I film it? Mm. Maybe blur out the little piece, you know, nothing, uh, nothing to see here as they say. Anyway, uh, that should solve the damp shower issue. It's amazing. Another quick one. I got stopped at the border. Uh, I, I got the ferry from England, from Holland to Rotterdam. They held me at Rotterdam. Not too long, but query in my 90 days. How many days have I been in Italy this year? So it's been a lot, but I'm way under the, the, uh, the threshold. But something must have come up on the screen. As he put my passport in, um, called his colleague over. Big powwow, a lot of pointing, a lot of flicking through my stamps in my book, in my passport rather. And uh, a few questions like, you know, what am I doing here? Anyway, all nice, very nice people. Just took a while, that's all. So be warned, Brexit, they're counting the days properly. What else? What else? There's something else. I've forgotten there's something else, I'm sure there is. Oh yeah! Drink some nice wine. Why not, eh? Anyway, I'm in Germany. Roads are good as usual. Fly through Germany. So the route this time, I've not done this actual route, through Holland, and then I'm down through Germany following the border. It saves on tolls. I don't know, it'll save me 40, 50 euros. So I'm gonna go through Switzerland because I've already got the vignette for Switzerland, which was 40 Fran Swiss francs. About 40 quid, roughly, I think. I don't know. Anyway, 40 of some currency, and that gives me road tax in Switzerland for a year, and then I'll toll through Italy. The tolls, the, the tolls are the same whether you go in to the top through uh, through Austria and down past Garda, or whether you come through Switzerland and you go into Italy via Lake Como and around Milan. The tolls are the, they're, they're relative. So I'm saving on the French tolls. I'm saving on the Austrian tolls by going through Germany and through Switzerland. Same journey time. Hopefully I'll get to the house around 11 o'clock, maybe midnight. So I got off the ferry this morning, <coughs> cruise down. Playlist is pumped. I've got my rocket fuel here, which, oh my God, this stuff. Jesus. This is uh, rocket fuel. So car karaoke and, oh, another thing, while you're in Germany, they do drive fast here. 
nobody lane hogs, which is lovely. So I'm in the middle lane now. You, you're flying past all the trucks, as you can probably see off my right shoulder. Um, but you probably can't see on the left. I'm doing 90 miles an hour. They must be doing 120. Bam. So you've always got to keep a lookout. It's great fun driving in Germany. It feels really safe, even though everyone's driving very fast. They're all good drivers. Unlike some other countries, not mentioning any names.